weekend. It's been a while, hey guys. Hello, Opter Ricks. Good to see you in here nice and early. Pretty pumped for today's stream. Had a good weekend. I wouldn't say I had a good weekend of rest, but it definitely was good and everything went really well. Miss Chrissy! Three months in a row with the resub. Thank you for all of your continued support. And I'm excited to maybe be able to meet you one day. I think that's in the works, isn't it? So that's awesome. Thanks for everything, girl. Really appreciate it. And as always, let me know if you need anything. Opterix just paid over $1,600 for car repairs. Boo! That is never fun. Like, that is why I do not enjoy owning a vehicle. Because you honestly never know when something might go wrong. Whether it's, like, minor or major, there's always that, like, little bit of expense that you never expect to have. So I'm feeling for you, man. I know it's rough for sure. And... I don't really rely on my vehicle a lot, but I totally understand for you guys that do. And yeah, totally sucks to have to spend that money on something that has to get you from A to B all the time. But at least you're safe and at least you have a car. <laughs> Lots of people that don't even have that. So there's always a silver lining. Did anyone get up to anything fun this weekend? 
I didn't do anything too crazy. I think the highlight of the weekend was Sam and I went out for breakfast on Saturday. We had to take the work van in to get like a chip replaced on the windshield. So the place was pretty much beside a diner that we've wanted to check out. It's called Floyd's Diner. And we got there like right at 8 a.m. And they literally just opened the door. So we are one of the few people they sat first, which is awesome. I always like doing that, especially for breakfast. Because that way you know that the kitchen is not going to get backed up. And they still have time to pay attention to what they're cooking for you. And I got a California Eggs Benedict is what they called it. And it had bacon, avocado, sliced tomato, brie, hollandaise, and then a little bit of pesto on top. It was unreal. And the way that they did their hash browns was like little rounds of potato that were probably a third of an inch thick. And they were so nice and crispy, like almost like chips, but a little bit thicker, right? So there's still that really nice fluffy potato inside. It was really good. So definitely a place that we're going to check out again. The vibes were cool in there, like total diner style, lots of different colors, a lot of booths to sit in, and a lot of like old school photos and sayings and stuff on the wall. So that was really fun. You practice the Brahms Sonata, number two accompaniment for a clarinetist. That's recording for her college auditions. What? That is very cool, man. I love how you help out a lot of your students. That is really, really awesome of you. Because a lot of teachers don't take that care after they teach their students. So you're awesome, dude. Keep it up. I'm sure everyone appreciates you a lot. It was rich. Like the portion was huge too. So I only ended up eating half of it. And then I had the other half today for lunch. And surprisingly enough, like the eggs were cooked perfectly and I microwaved it on like a low power to heat it back up. And it was still really good. Like, what is it? Three days later, but yeah, definitely really rich. Could definitely only eat half considering it was like so much fat, like the avocado, the bacon, the hollandaise, the cheese. Definitely not the best thing for you, but it will keep you satisfied and it will fill you up. She's actually from another school district. She found out about you through word of mouth. See, there you go. That's when you know you're great. When word travels like that about you, you must be pretty awesome. Okay, guys, so breakfast for dinner today as well. I guess I'm on a little bit of a breakfast kick. And I think that breakfast is a great thing to use up whatever is kind of laying around in the fridge, whether it is meats or veggies or cheeses. There's always a lot of options that you can go. Just like my cooking. If you say so, man. I'll take it. So today on stream, I'm going to make one of my favorite childhood breakfasts, I would say. Yeah, pork belly and croissants. Yeah, once again, really rich, right? I think breakfasts are typically really rich. Especially when you're going like the more brunch route, for sure. So wife saver casserole, the recipe is posted in discord guys, but let me just, um, do a little copy paste action and chat for you. For those of you that aren't in discord, I feel ya. Not everyone wants to be there. Liz. There we go. And the recipe that we use is like, I would say out of one of those like old school kind of newspapery magazines. It's really old. I don't know where it is upstairs. 
somewhere in Betty's stuff. But as long as I can remember, we've been eating this breakfast on Christmas mornings. So it's pretty special to us, for sure. And ever since Sammy and I, I guess, moved out here to the island, we've been making it more often than just Christmas. Because if you love something that much, why don't, like, why would you only eat it once a year? And it's really, really easy to make. So I thought I would share this recipe with you guys. It's great if you want to do like some meal prep ahead of time for like weekday breakfast. It's really easy to reheat it in the microwave or the oven really quick. And it doesn't have to be super fatty. Like you don't have to use pork belly. You can use ham, which is a little more lean. And you don't have to use as much cheese. You can use more egg. So there are a lot of routes to go with this recipe and I'm going to show you guys the route I'm going with today because I took out the pork belly from the freezer as well as the croissants. So I saw those laying around for the last couple of weeks and I was like, I should finally use those up and make something breakfasty. Liz, how are you? Tris donated, yeah, five bucks. So we're making burritos for him tomorrow. Your mom used to make wife saver for Christmas breakfast. What did you guys call it then? Box fetish? <laughs> You're still at work. Finally have entertainment. Yas. On Saturday night, you ate dinner at an Indian friend's. She made the best samosas. Oh, I'm jealous. Like sometimes there's really nothing better than like a properly made samosa. Just the smell of it when it's being made and the taste. I can't even imagine. Like the ones that I made didn't even come close to what I've had before. So a lot more work involved there on my samosas. But maybe one day I'll hit perfection. Wear a wife beater while making a wife saver. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> You think just like an egg casserole, huh? That's interesting. I know it's kind of a funny name, hey? Wife saver. I love that little duck emote. Oh my God, dabbing duck, epic, epic. And then because this breakfast is pretty rich, I thought I would do a salad with it on the side. So you're gonna need something to cut all of that delicious fat that we're gonna be consuming. So I wanted to use up some stuff from the garden that are fresh right now. So I picked some yellow, purple, and green beans, the French style. I also have, look at a yellow carrot here. I might go out to the garden and pick a couple more carrots. And then we also have a really nice red beet here for our salad too. So all this stuff going in is from the garden today. And then I also picked a bunch of lettuce from the garden as well that we can use and wash up. So everything is looking really good in the garden too, guys. Spent a little bit of time out there this morning. All of the tomatoes are starting to ripen now, which is so exciting for me because I am a tomato fiend for sure. And we've also pulled out a couple of things. So I pulled out the bok choy today from the garden. So that's going to leave us room to plant something that will grow over the winter. And then also the fava beans are done. So we got those pulled out as well. And we kind of have to think about what to fill the garden with for the winter time. So exciting things. Nice little cycle of life and death. That's the fun part of gardening. Duck emotes for the win. Coffee is for cutting the fat. Yeah, yeah. Do I have any heirloom varieties? I believe so, Opterix. I totally don't remember two of the varieties that we have. I know one of them that I got from the farm where I volunteer is called Stupice. And it's Italian variety. And this is what it looks like. So they're really nice little round tomatoes. I just picked this one, I think yesterday. And the key, if you're growing tomatoes or even if you buy them, tomatoes don't like to go into the fridge. 
which is a mistake that a lot of people do make. And it actually changes the flavor of them and the texture. So if you're ever picking your tomatoes from the garden and they're a little underripe, always leave them out. And even when you're keeping them, always leave them out. If you need to, just cover them with a cloth to keep it nice and dark. And that will really preserve that sweet taste of the tomato. I know, so good fetish. Like I've been waiting for these tomatoes for months now. Hey Jalal, thanks for the 15 biddies. First biddies of the week, thank you for that. And how's it going? Yeah, exactly. Tomatoes keep for a long time if you leave them out. And that is what is wrong with supermarkets. And that's why most of them do taste like cardboard, sad to say. Because they're always kept in the fridge so that they don't go bad in time. Because people always need to stock up in the supermarkets, obviously in the fridge. And it sucks because people don't actually know how a tomato should taste especially if they've never grown one themselves or have even been given one from, let's say, a farm or a garden. So change the world a little bit there. Never put your tomatoes in the fridge. Okay, and then our dressing for the salad, back to that. We got a little sidetracked and that's okay. So I'm gonna make sweet and spicy ginger vinaigrette to go with the salad. So white wine vinegar, a mix of oils, and you can sweeten it with maple syrup or honey or sugar, really whatever you want. And then we're going to grate some ginger, put in some Korean chili flakes, which are more floral and less spicy than your typical red pepper flake. And then just season it with salt and pepper after. Oh, box fetish, thank you for the biddies. Yeah, fellow Christmas wife saver and tomato grower. Love that. We've got some stuff in common, and I think that's why we all stick together on here. And thank you guys for the support, for sure. And this morning I went with Posh, picked two and a half more pounds of blackberries. They are just everywhere right now. And I want to take advantage of them being really ripe and in season. So we're going to make more jam today as well. And we're going to see the full process through. Just because the casserole does not take that long to make. And neither does the salad. So we got some time to kill, I think, later on. So let's make more blackberry jam. And this recipe doesn't have to be just for blackberries. You could also use raspberries or strawberries. I just thought I would show you guys how to make jam and just how easy it is to make and preserve your own. And the way that we preserve it, it doesn't have to be kept in the fridge. It just needs to be kept somewhere cool and dark. And I think that's a really important thing about having a garden as well or living somewhere that has a lot of wild produce available with the different seasons is you need to know how to preserve those things so that you can still enjoy them later on when they're not in season. I know it's kind of like a grandma thing to do, but I think if we start earlier on, then you would really appreciate it more. So that is what else we're gonna do today. So order of prep is we need to fry up the pork belly first. If you're gonna use ham for the wife saver casserole, you don't have to fry it up because it's just gonna dry it out but something that is pretty fatty, like pork belly or even bacon, you can put in there. I just have pork belly because we didn't cure it at all and we didn't smoke it. All I did was roast it in the oven. So it's rendered a little bit of fat already, but I think we should crisp it up even more and render out more fat just so it's not as rich of a dish. And we could even keep that pork belly fat for later. It's always good to fry your eggs up in. You used to can so many jars of tomato sauce when you were growing up. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I can't even imagine. Yeah, I'm very excited to have access to a cold room in the house here. And I really want to do my due diligence and fill it up with amazing stuff. 
Okay, so we'll fry up the pork belly, get that ready for the wife saver. We have to assemble the casserole. So we got to cut up the croissants, shred some cheese, mix up some eggs, and it has a little custard with milk. And there's a little bit of garlic in there. You can make it a little bit spicy if you want. So you can add Tabasco, Worcestershire as well. I know that's kind of a weird mix, but it's really good with eggs. Really nice and savory. And then the topping, which is like one of my favorite, favorite parts of this, is you can use corn flakes or Rice Krispies, or it says Special K. And you just finish with that near the end. So you sprinkle on the corn flakes on the top. They're gonna stick into the melted cheese and you just drizzle a little bit of butter over it. I know, dirty. And then those get really nice and toasty and you get this little bit of crunchy stuff on the top of the casserole. It's so, so good. Do you remember going overboard with cucumbers one year? Making about 70 quart jars of pickles. Oh my gosh. That's a really good idea too, is when you're preserving, do smaller portions so that you can give them away as gifts if you ever go to someone's house or have company over. It's a really good thing and people do appreciate homemade stuff. So that is always a good thing to keep in mind. I know that's what I've been keeping in mind, so I'm making sure that I nicely label everything as well. And yeah, we'll be doing some cucumber pickles quite soon, I think. I have a bunch that are going to be ready probably within the next week. So we'll probably do up one or two jars. You much prefer dill to sweet pickles, though. I think I do, too. I don't think I've ever made like a sweet pickle yet for myself but I think it does require a lot of balance for the brine. Cause if you make it too sweet, then you really won't want to eat it or put it with anything. So making that brine tailored to your palate is important. And that's why a recipe is just a guideline. You got three times the amount of cucumbers as normal. Well, that's amazing. Got that bumper crop. <laughs> hey, Hammy, how are you? And speaking of pickles, I did quite a bit of fermenting and pickling at work the last two days. I did some pickled carrots and we also did some fermented cucumbers. And the ferment that I made yesterday was probably one of my favorites I've ever seen. So what it was, was fermented garlic with miso paste. This was like one of the best smelling things I've ever smelled that had garlic in it. It's like very, very, I guess, umami flavored and aroma. And then we blitzed it with ginger and shallot. And then we made like a 4% brine with just salt and water and mix that in. And we also added some shiso leaves to the mix. And then that's going to ferment for at least a couple weeks. And so Fermenting and pickling are different. Fermenting, there is no vinegar involved. It's just salt and water. And this is pretty risky in some instances because it's a wild ferment. So you're relying on the wild yeast on the cucumber skin and from the air to preserve your pickle or whatever you're using to ferment. Whereas pickling, you use vinegar and that's a obviously preservative that works right away. So there's a lot of stuff to learn when you start preserving and it's good to know the difference of each one. And yeah, sometimes fermenting doesn't work out. If you get a bad bacteria or a bad yeast in there, your whole batch can go wrong. So fermenting a little bit more risky, but it is fun because you can play with it a lot more. Hey eggs, how are you guys? I saw that you did the Great British Beer Festival last week. How was that? I just popped in real quick for like a couple of minutes on one of those streams and it looked like so much fun. I went to a couple of beer fests when I still lived in Alberta and they were really fun. I love to sample all the different beers. 
You made a few jars of sweet using honey. That would be really good Bob's fetish. Like more of a floral flavor. So wife saver eggs. I did post it in chat before, but I'll post it again for you guys. This is a breakfast casserole that I grew up eating on Christmas morning. This is something that my dad would always make on Christmas Eve. And then you let it sit overnight. You don't have to, but this is why it's called Wife Saver is my dad would make it the day before Christmas, let it sit overnight, and then all you have to do is pop it in the oven. And usually when we put it in the oven to bake, it takes around 40 minutes for the custard to set with the eggs. And in that time, we would like open up our gifts and chill out together. And then when it was done, we always ate it with sliced tomatoes and cucumbers. And I'd always put a little bit of sugar on my tomatoes because they're it's like in the middle of winter, right? So they weren't as sweet as they usually are. That is how I used to eat my wife's favorite breakfast. Good to an extent, Hammy. Your dad got taken to the hospital last night by ambulance. What? That is not good. Yeah, I hope he gets well soon. Keep us updated, okay? It is so good, eggs. Like, really, really good. And today, instead of using white bread, I'm using croissants. And also roasted pork belly. It's going to be dirty. Okay. So after we assemble our wife saver, we can just pop that back into the fridge until we're about 40 to 45 minutes out from eating. Then we will make up our salad and our dressing. That can be popped back into the fridge as well. That way it's just good to go and we just have to dress it to eat it later. Once those two things are done, I mean, that's pretty much it for dinner prep. Really, really easy stuff. We're gonna move on to the blackberry jam and start doing some preserving. And then I think the rest of the stream will kind of just see its way on. It sounds so much tastier than the recipe. Yeah, I mean, you can play around with the bread, play around with your add-ins of meat and cheese. You could even add veggies into there if you want, because I know it says there's green pepper in this one, but we've never done that. I don't think I would use green pepper either. Probably use something sweeter. He's going for like an MRI tomorrow. Yeah, I hope he's okay. Honestly, Hammy. Okay, let's get started. Let's get into our pork belly. And then another thing that we hopefully can do later on stream is we need to marinate a little beef roast for the burritos tomorrow. And I'm just gonna throw that in the slow cooker probably tomorrow afternoon. And then we're gonna make shredded beef for the burritos as well. Pork belly croissants. Yeah, screw the wife saver. Let's just fry up the pork belly and put it into the croissant with maybe a slice or two of cheese. Good to go. <laughs> Simple as that, screw it. Fry up an egg, done. But I promise guys, this thing is really, really good when it's all made properly. I thought he had gallstones, but he got his gallbladder removed ages ago. Well, at least they could rule that out. Yeah, how much butter are you gonna use? It says we need half a cup. Plus like, I would say two cups at least of shredded cheese. Hello, Death, how are you, man? How was the weekend? inject cheese into the pork belly and then deep fry it. Wonderful, Matt. Yeah, let's do it. There are so many routes that we can go with this. Okay, so these are my little pieces of pork belly. So this is the one that I did with J David Chang's recipe. So it was cured for a day with salt and sugar. And then you just roast it in an oven really slowly until it's tender. So it's not smoked or anything like that. It just has a little bit of a quick cure on it, but it is really flavorful. And like I said, with us roasting it previously, 
there is a little bit of fat that got rendered out. And I think I want to use up all these pieces today. I might save this guy to kind of fry up at the end on its own and then we'll just portion it into four pieces so that everyone can still get a nice taste of the pork belly without it being in the casserole as well. Yeah, eggs. I know, I have someone working on the badges as we speak. Hopefully he can get them done pretty quickly because I would love to get those started for you guys. And that is so good, hey eggs? I love those perks. Camera, be good. So I'm gonna use a plastic cutting board to cut this. If you ever make it to Canada, you're crashing at my place. Sounds good, Matt. I'm in. And what should we render this in? Maybe this big guy. And let's just cut little lardons out of the pork belly today. So nice chunky pieces. The weekend was good, death. That is good, man. How is it for the smoke over there? Because it's really smoky here today. Like when I went for a walk with Posh earlier, so hazy, it was kind of giving me a headache. Cause I'm not used to that. Yeah, no shortage of pork belly. No way. Can one buy pork belly at the grocery store? I believe so. I don't know how big of a pork belly you can get at the grocery store, but at the butcher, I mean, we have the choice of a full pork belly, which is pretty much the size of this cutting board, which I think is what I got last time. Or you can get like a half slab as well, or even just little chunks. I'm pretty sure I've seen. And it is pretty inexpensive. I think it's gotten bumped up in price a little bit in the last few years, just because a lot of chefs do like to work with it. It does take in flavor really nicely. So we're cutting like, I would say half inch chunks of pork belly. And then do the same size going the other way. So you get nice little bite-sized pieces and obviously when these fry up, they will shrink a little bit as well. Breakfast for dinner is life, yes, solid. I know, it really is nice. So because it's not really smoked or anything, it doesn't have that nice pink color like bacon would. And that is totally okay. Yeah, honestly, if you're ever struggling to make something for dinner, my go-to is always breakfast. Eggs are so quick to cook up and same with whatever breakfast meats you eat, whether it's like bacon or sausage. Some people even fry up like a burger to go with their breakfast. And then usually someone always has bread at their house in the freezer or wherever you keep it. So it's a really quick go-to. This smells so good already, guys. Eggs, what was your guys' favorite beer at the beer fest? And did you have any awesome snacks? this now and like I said I'm just gonna keep that really nice chunk aside for now and we will fry it up later on closer to when we eat death 
Gifton solid the sub. Thank you, man. What a freaking start on this Monday. Thanks for all the love already, guys. Probably would it have to be this milk stout called Swoon. That sounds so good, eggs. Stouts are underrated, I think, in the beer world. And I think it's mostly the color of them because everyone thinks that if it's a dark color, the beer is going to be strong. You just had a bourbon barrel stout that was quite good. Amazing. Solid, yes. Welcome to the squad. Enjoy your onion. Okay, just rinsing my knife. Pretty fatty. I'm washing my hands as well. And then we're going to get frying. And then while we fry, we can prep up the rest of the stuff for the casserole. You have a great recipe for a honey stove. That sounds amazing, Optrix. <laughs> Matt, broke till Thursday. Ramen noodles and frozen burritos. I guess it could be worse though, man. Okay, let's turn this pan on to just over medium. You don't want to go too hot because we still want to render some fat out. And if you go too hot, you're just going to end up burning it before you render all the fat out. So keep that in mind. Nice medium temp is always best. You usually put stout in when you, you do an instant pot of beef roast. Yes. Meat and beer, really good combos. Rice and soy sauce is pretty cheap. Yeah, it is. Totally is. Okay, I'm just gonna put my pork belly over there for now. And the size of casserole that you want for this is a 13 by nine. It doesn't have to be a glass pan. You can use a metal one as well, but that is the size that works best for this recipe. Okay, and I also have these little hot dog buns because Sammy and I had some Smokies from the butcher yesterday for dinner that were really good. So I'm gonna use those up as well. Just because I think the croissants are gonna get packed down a little bit because they are so fluffy. Yes, so much pork going on in here. We cannot even. Let me just grab a bowl to put this stuff into. Maybe just a pan. But obviously, if you're using sliced bread, this is a lot easier. Because then you don't have to cut down the bread any further. But I'm using a bunch of bread that's left over. So you gotta get creative. the serrated knife. I think I'm just gonna go in half with these guys. And honestly, by the time everything is layered in the casserole, you won't even notice that you've used like a hot dog bun. That's the best part. They are massive. Like honestly massive croissants. Texas size. Holy smokes, sushi with the host, thank you. Okay, our pan is just heating up. And then with the croissants as well, let's just do in half. So try and be pretty gentle with them. And this might even work better if your croissants aren't fresh, because that way they're a little bit more dry. 
and maybe they'll go not as soggy is my guess but with all of these holes in there i think it should stay pretty light but i guess with the butter croissant how can it be considered light <laughs> don't fool yourselves guys and we need two layers of bread for this so one for the bottom and one for the top and then the meat and the cheese gets layered inside and then you just pour the custard with the egg over top it's the air holes so good this makes me want to just eat one of these right now okay i think that might be enough i'm just gonna wipe my board off and bring the casserole over and we'll do a little measurement before we move on Thanks, Beth, for that show note. That is appreciated. How is our pan? Okay, it's getting there. I think we should only do half the pork belly at a time as well. That way it'll really brown up and not steam too much. Hi guys, if you haven't yet, go check out Belly. Awesome community page for both cooking streamers and programmers for computers. Really, really awesome site created by Sushi Day. Hey, one solid layer of pork belly that is just gonna slowly render. Should be pretty easy. You missed the Shoko croissant? What's that? Okay, so let's just pretend measure out our croissants. So like I said, you just want one layer <laughs> on each piece. And you can totally like press it in if you need to or even tear it to fit croissant with chocolate drizzled all over it. I'm in. You know, Sammy always talks about growing up in Germany and like being at his grandma's house. He'd always just walk down the street to the bakery and like grab a pretzel in the morning or something. Makes me want to go to Germany so bad. Okay, well that looks good. And obviously when we pour the custard in, the bread's gonna soak it up and then you will be able to kind of press it down more. And obviously with square pieces of bread, it will be more even, but I've made these with even like little dinner buns and it's turned out. So that's why I'm not overly worried about how this is gonna look at the end. It does get covered with cheese and cornflakes, so you won't really notice any of the imperfections. You have to give them a message. And I believe their little contact is on the main page there. And then they will add you to the site. And then as soon as you're live, it'll post you on there. It's really, really awesome eggs. Yeah. There's the bakery within walking distance, no matter where you live. Hey guys, hear those sizzles? This is happiness over here. Let's not disturb this too much yet. If it's still a little bit stuck to the bottom, that means it's not ready. I'm gonna put the casserole aside and let us grate up some cheese. So cheddar is, I think the best for this, as far as like flavor and melting ability, but Gruyere would also be good, I think, and Brie. So get creative with this. I'm gonna use an old cheddar and also a white aged cheddar. And like I said, we need about two cups total. So let's do a cup of each and see 
where that ends up. Okay, let's check this now. Oh yeah, no sticking. Nice golden brown color. use this piece of parchment to protect the board. You want a piece of the pork belly? <laughs> Just crying. It smells so good. I'm really excited. I think a lot of people just don't use pork belly enough. Like all they know is bacon, but they don't even know that bacon is pork belly. That's just been cured and smoked. Like there's so many other uses for pork belly. And I do love to cook it in this way. Keep it in nice big pieces, roast it up. Try not to get plastic in with your grated cheese. That would be good. And because this one is like quick cured with salt and sugar, that also helps with the browning aspect of it. So you'll get more caramelization obviously with more sugars that are in it. And it is just equal parts salt and sugar. What kind of cheese? This one is a English white cheddar called Coastal. I picked it up from Costco. It's aged 15 months. So it's really nice and crumbly and salty. What a pretty strong flavor. And I think it's going to be great with eggs. Okay. This should be our last little stir. We'll let this go for a couple more minutes. Take this bit out and start up the next batch. So that color is great. You definitely don't want to over fry this because it could get dry. So let's just push this cheese aside. Okay, that looks like two cups in itself. I think it's better to grate more cheese now than to have to grate extra later. Did you cover it in sugar and salt grains? Yes. And I used a more coarse sugar that's like unrefined. So it's a little bit darker. Typically it's an organic sugar that you can buy like that. And then nice coarse salt cover it all completely and then let it sit overnight in the fridge and then roast it up low and slow the next day. It's rugged yet. Yeah. Render, render, render. I believe we're halfway through August already. Opterix, is it true that Americans go back to school earlier than Canadian kids? Because Canadian kids don't usually start school until September. I was talking to someone the other day that said Americans go to school like mid-August. Not uniformly. Interesting. So it kind of depends on the state then. Kids in the South go to school earlier. Cool. You go back September 4th. Okay, that's similar to us then. I just thought that was really interesting. I did not know that some places go 
that much earlier. You go back on the 20th? Okay, that's really early then. Let's tape this out. Looks so good. I'll show you it in a second. Be careful because it does splatter when you render. And we're going to let this cool off a little bit before we assemble. You don't want to put hot meat in with the eggs and the cheese. Ooh, that's a hot pan. Yum. Okay, second batch, be careful so it doesn't splash. Try guys. Mm -hmm. So because we already cured it, we don't have to season this at all when we're frying it. It's already sweet and salty, which is great. So it kind of is pre-seasoned for us. And this is really good. I need to keep that like away from me. Otherwise, I'll just be snacking on it the whole time. You stopped on the 27th of June. Okay, that's pretty regular. Here in New York, it's always right after Labor Day. Okay, same with us then. Thanks for the follow, Lady Grey. Welcome in. Okay, so... Here is our cheese mountain that we have prepared. And let's just mix them up so they're nicely combined. And it's totally okay if you have leftover cheese grated. I usually just wrap it up in the parchment and put it in the fridge for whatever I need. Just make sure you use it up because it will dry out pretty quickly. You want to visit Cheese Mountain. You're the best, man. Hey, Dante. How are you, man? How was the weekend? Let's just pack this up like this anyways. And then let's start on our egg custard. So what do we need? We need six eggs. So I'm gonna use five duck eggs. And then we need three cups of milk. Man, it's smelling porky in here already. And then we're just gonna whisk this up with a little bit of seasonings. You're good and hungry. You've come to the right spot, or have you? <laughs> yeah, sometimes I wonder, box fetish, if smell vision would be a good thing or not. Because there's definitely some smells that you probably not want to smell. Maybe having like an on and off switch for it would be a good thing. <laughs> You don't have to smell people's farts or bad stinky cooking. Just a couple things to keep in mind, I think. Okay, let's get a bowl to mix our custard in. Yeah, 
<laughs> yes, Dante, exactly, man. You never know. So I always like to whisk my eggs first for custard before you add the milk. And that way you don't get any stringy pieces of the white, which typically doesn't like to mix in that well. Would definitely need an off switch. I love it. Yeah, these are duck eggies. They're so good. They're like one and a half chicken eggs. So I'm gonna use five duck eggs because I like it pretty eggy instead of the six chicken eggs. They are huge. They are honestly huge and they're only six bucks for a dozen. Like it's a steal of a deal. richest casserole ever. I think so. This is Kate's version. <laughs> May not be good for you, but it'll taste really good. Really, really dang good. Break all of our yolks. Give that a good mix. So duck egg yolks are really custardy. Takes a good little bit to mix them in with the whites. I think you could use a mix of both fetish. Yeah, if you wanted to go really rich, then you could add cream. You could also do like half and half or mix milk and cream together. But I think with the richness of the eggs, I'm gonna stick with milk. And the casserole bakes at a low heat so that the custard, sorry, lost my word there, can set up properly and doesn't get too overcooked. Okay, let's give this another stir me. Maybe one minute more and then this is coming out. I'm just gonna turn the pan off at this point. It's gonna have residual heat to finish cooking the pork belly. here actually made homemade eggnog. It is so good and I think it's worth it. Oh my god I love how the bowl is just like changing colors. Can we not? So three cups of milk. You've used the joy of cooking recipe. Yum! So freaking good. Hey, okay. pork is coming out, guys. Yes, with rum. <laughs> it's got to be boozy to cut all that fat. to the pork belly. The sizzle sounds so good, right? So good. We are just gonna let that cool off while I finish the custard. 
You had eggnog once and you didn't really like it. You don't know if it was just a bad one. Hey, Indog. Tasted nothing like the store stuff. Yeah, totally. I think the homemade one is better because you can control how sweet it is too. Sometimes I think the store ones are just too sweet. What does eggnog taste like to me? It's got like all of those really nice Christmassy spices. So like cinnamon, nutmeg. I've also seen a recipe that uses like ginger and pink peppercorns. Chance, hey man. Welcome in, I'm glad you're here. I tried to contact you for a request for this week for me to make, but I didn't get a hold of you. So let me know what you want me to make from your top bits from last week, and then I'll put it on the menu for next week for you. I don't want to forget about that. You like the eggnog made by dairies. Ah, there's an Island Farms dairy place here and I'm pretty sure their eggnog is amazing. It's so thick that you can pour it right into your ice cream machine and it'll make like the best ice cream ever. It was a little scary since it aged about two to three weeks. I know, it's weird, hey? Okay, how about you stop that camera? Behave. Okay, so now into our custard. Let's put some salt and pepper for sure. I would err on the lower side of salt for this, just because we got some good aged cheeses that are salty, as well as the seasoned pork belly already. It's always better to go less and then top it up afterwards. But because there is milk and eggs here, definitely need just a touch of salt. So I would say I put probably a teaspoon in there. Fresh cracked pepper, always a good idea. No problem, Chance. I think I messaged you on Discord. Can make it a week before Christmas and I'll keep through New Year's. So good. I like to go pretty peppery for this. Pretty peppery. And then the recipe originally calls for onion, but I like adding minced garlic way, way more. I'm not a huge fan of like the onion with the egg. I'd way rather have that garlicky flavor. So let's cut this guy up. Just gotta cut the stock off. Yay for farm garlic. And I think I'm going to the farm tomorrow, guys. I haven't gone in two weeks. I need to start stocking up on stuff again. I had a good break, definitely. But I need to go back. So let's do a couple cloves of garlic. And we'll just put it into the garlic press. That way it's nice and finely minced. So maybe these three will be great. And this garlic isn't super strong, so I know I can add that little bit more without overpowering the dish. You put in a lot of alcohol. I love that in dog. <laughs> Oop. You don't have Discord, really? Because I found you on there. But you can just uh, whisper me through Twitch. That's totally fine. Or yeah, you can email me. My email is on my channel page. So you have lots of ways to get a hold of me. Whichever one works for you, works for me too. Farm stream, I don't think that's possible. I don't really think there is much of an internet connection out there. But definitely we'll be doing a garden stream from here pretty soon. So we're getting another little Wi-Fi box to set up so that I can do an outdoor stream without losing any connections. So that's gonna be fun. More IRL streams to come, guys. 
And I usually spend time in the garden in the morning while it's still nice and cool. So that's probably what time I will be doing those streams at. So keep that in mind, but I will let you know when I plan on doing those. Yeah, Sea Bluff stream. I honest, honestly wish I could, guys. Just the farm is too big to be able to do it. And data here is so expensive in Canada if you go over. So I really don't want to risk it because you can rack up like 300 bucks in minutes. Because there is no such thing as unlimited data. Kiko's sister, how are you? It's sad that you forget there are places without Wi-Fi. I know, hey? It's nuts, so The struggle, hey, guys? So they do onion and green pepper in their wife saver. Not a fan of either of those things in here. So I always like to do, like, garlic or chopped chive or green onion is really good, too. And then we'd need just a dash of hot sauce, whatever kind you want, totally okay. And a little bit of Dijon mustard. I know that's a weird one too, but I think it really complements the flavor of everything. Well, I'm gonna grab those things. This is my homemade Chipotle hot sauce. So we'll put a spoonful of that in. you're fine well that's good but you're not great you had unlimited data when you bought your first iPhone that must have been a while ago so one teaspoon of mustard is more than enough obviously if you love mustard you can do a little bit more You have 40 gigs. I don't even know what we have here. That's your Dijon. It's so good. My, the my brand, nice French. All day math meeting, man. The struggle, hey? Okay, one nice, nice spoonful of hot sauce. Or probably like, I would say 10 good shakes of your Tabasco bottle. And then a couple shakes of Worcestershire. That stuff can be pretty strong, so try not to overdo it. Should have some right here. Good old Lee and Perrins. Hey, Autism Mama, good to see you in here. There we go, like four shakes. I'm glad that you're lurking and it's totally okay. Thanks for letting me know that you're watching. Okay, so that is it. That's all we're putting into it because we're having veggies on the side in our salad. So I don't think veggies are necessary here, but if you just want to make one full casserole, I think chopped spinach would be good in there. Peppers, tomatoes, maybe even peas. Peas and egg is always good. So make sure this is nicely mixed. Obviously there's not really a way for us to safely test this. So that's why following the recipe here is a good idea. 
Can you ask about the food truck? It is a plan, Chance. It is in the plan for my life. I think that won't happen for at least a year or two. But I'm starting to get to know some awesome people that can help with it and maybe invest. So who knows? Maybe it'll happen sooner than later. I'm just going to take the whisk out. Don't feel like we need it now. And we're going to pour half of the egg mixture over the bread now so that it can kind of start to soak up. I think it looks so funny with these hot dog buns. <laughs> And you normally don't teach math. Oh my gosh, Opteryx. Oh yeah, you're teaching pre-calc. Man, the struggle. Who knows though, maybe you'll really enjoy it. Doing something new. The egg pour. So good. Okay, so now we got to come back in with our pork. So good. I think I want to put a little bit of the pork on top so that it stays really nice and crispy. Use a little bit of garnish with the corn flakes. How does that sound, guys? Maybe not, though. Because we do have the extra pork piece to fry it later, so let's just do it all. It's going to be heavy. Real heavy. Yes, do it, eggs. And like I said, you don't even have to put meat in it if you're vegetarian. You can totally load it up with veggies. And that is okay. Okay, now with the cheesums, we'll do half in the middle here, and then we'll save half for the top. Thanks, box fetish. Appreciate the love. Hey, faders. How are you? I love having you guys in here with me. It's definitely a rare occasion these days. I think I'm going to garnish this with some really nice sliced chives later. That way we'll get a little bit of that onion flavor, but it won't be overpowering. I am great, man. Thanks for asking. Okay, now we can layer in our other pieces of bread. Maybe I'll offset these ones. Play the shapes game. <laughs> Pretend you're a little kid again. And like I said, those little holes here that are missing stuff, totally okay. Believe me. By the time this is all baked up and melty, you won't even notice that. Finely chopped broccoli. Yeah, broccoli and cheddar. Always a good option for sure. And that's really good for you, too. Just want to make sure that the custard doesn't run off. And then I think we're going to try to press this. Just so the egg custard gets soaked up really well. But I always find that the top layer of the bread gets a little bit crunchier than the bottom, which is nice. Because sometimes when you do custard things, they go soggy on you and it's just not that appetizing. <laughs> no wife saver for you, baiters. You're too late. It's 
been all bought up. Okay, ready? Next layer of cheese. It is croissant. Yeah, this is such a good breakfast casserole to use up like any leftover bread. And then honestly, my favorite part of it is putting on the cornflakes on the topping. We have such a nice little toasty, crunchy flavor. The dish is sacred. Yeah, it's definitely holy. <laughs> definitely cover this with some plastic wrap yeah exactly box fetish is having this left over it can stay up to a week in the fridge such a good like meal prep item for sure guys we get to open up a new box of plastic wrap If you're on the verge of being divorced, you can make this dish to save your marriage. Exactly. So the way we did it in my family, this was always a Christmas tradition, is my dad would always make this on Christmas Eve. Let it sit overnight and then pop it in the oven while we open presents the next day. And that way my mom didn't have to do any cooking because she would always make a lot of the Christmas dinner right so save your wife a little bit of work the midnight snack so dirty yeah there's a lot of options to eat this breakfast dinner lunch snack you name it Adopt you, Dante. <laughs> yeah, now taking adoption applications. Okay. Saran wrap almost set up. This box is going to last us years, probably. Like years. we're going to do two separate sheets. And leave enough slack so that we can push that down a bit as well. wash the dishes and clean the house and the cars as well as rake the yard give you a chance man that sounds like a good deal nice and productive trust i think maybe even if we just press down with our hands that is okay Boop. Give myself a little bit more slack. Anything for that food. Bam. I think that's great. So it's pretty soaked in now. I don't know if you guys can see that. Now we're going to pop that into the fridge for later. Dinner prepped up, ready to go. Yeah, it's not even baked and it looks so good. Okay, I'm just going to run over to the other fridge with this. And I'll be right back. 
then we're moving on to the salad. Got any bricks? I do, but they're pretty dirty, obviously. I think this is great though. Like I said, the top layer is always a little bit crunchy and I'm okay with that. We still got to do the cornflakes and butter. So it's definitely not going to be dry. BRB guys. Sneaky Sammy in here. How are you? Thought I heard something. It's a me. It's a you. It's a me. How many pieces of wife saver will Sammy eat? I don't know. Maybe two if he's feeling really hungry. I think we usually cut it into eight. So the pieces are pretty big. I'll take half the pan. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay, so this is... No, I haven't. Five minutes, two. Doggo's dinner time. So this is frisbee from the garden. Yeah, don't fill up on salad. Terrible idea. Actually, I always try and eat the veggies first because I'm really bad with finishing them off if I don't eat it first, which is not that good for you. So just giving this a little rinsey rinse. And then the other lettuce in there is butter lettuce that didn't actually grow that well. I think there will be a little bit of stuff we have to pick through. And I pulled all of that out of the garden today. So we have room where that was to plant something else as well. Which if you guys have any suggestions for like wintertime vegetables, let me know. That's why you drink your veggies. Yeah, exactly, and dog. That's why I have a smoothie during the week. I load it up with a scoop of vegetable powder, as well as like a bunch of greens. You don't actually taste it in the smoothie, which is great. The fruit can definitely contrast the vegetable flavor really well. Okay, so we're spinning our lettuce dry so that the dressing can really stick onto it. It won't just flow off. It's pretty fun to use. Salad spinners are worth the money for sure. And like, look how much water we spun off of there. Apple juice with juiced greens, yum, yeah, so fresh. Ginger is always a good option as well in smoothies. And we just wanna make sure 
that we kind of break this up into bite-sized pieces just so it's nice and easy to eat. I think most of it is bite-sized though, so we are okay. Okay, so this bowl needs a little bit of picking through for sure. Some of the leaves are not so hot looking, but let's try and salvage as much as we can. That way nothing gets wasted. Ginger juice, yeah, so spicy, but so good for you. Really, really good for digestion. Same with fennel as well. So if you guys have like a picky stomach, ginger and fennel, really good additions to your diet. I love how small this little head of lettuce is. It's so cute, guys. And then if I need to, I can substitute with some other lettuce. We'll see how much we end up with here after we add this to our salad bowl. And then we just need to chop up some veggies and make the dressing. Has anyone eaten anything awesome yet today? Always try and ask that question. It's good to know what you guys like eating. Which makes it hard to breathe anyway. Guys, I'm just making sure that this lettuce is washed really well. It's pretty dirty. I find the curlier lettuce, it's easier for the dirt to get stuck in there. Just try to be really thorough. There we go. Matt, winning already. Love it, man. Stay salty. It might be on a cool down mode. I think it's like a 15 second cool down for stream elements.
Okay, I'm just gonna go to the bathroom quickly and then we'll finish everything off. But we're on a good roll so far. Okay. 40 more points, that's all you need, man? What, you won it. Okay, now you can buy a ticket. Good job, bud. See, that wasn't that hard. Still got a whole month to rack up more bones. For anyone that's in here, I'm doing a giveaway of a four pack of salt that is made locally here. So here's a couple of them. We got like a sweet and smoky maple, sun-dried tomato and basil. This one's awesome. Salted caramel chocolate, so good. Or desserts as I drop it. And then the other one, lemon and dill infused. Yeah, you get all of them. So you get a four pack of salts. And they retail for $7 each. So they're definitely not cheap. And they're really, really fun to cook with. Okay, now on to some chopping. It's for you, Dante. Chopping time. beans first. Just some really nice French beans from the garden. Even if you don't, yeah, you can't make friends with salad. Such a funny thing. And I'm going to do two cups of like really thinly sliced beans. I think we'll have a little bit extra, which is totally okay. Yeah, throw in a rack of lamb. <laughs> Hilarious. duck emotes for you. Um, the first thing we want to do is take the little stem piece off of the beans. So I like to line up a couple at a time. It's just faster. And then cut them off. We also have a doggo in here who loves beans. So I'll just give her this little one. Let's see. Do you love beans? Okay, come here. Okay, sit. You ready? This is our bean tester. Oh, bounced off her nose twice. She actually will pick the bean off of the stalk in the garden with me. The beans, so they're separate plants, the way that the colors are, but they do grow well together. And the purple ones are really cool because even when you cook them, they still turn green. So they don't stay purple. 
They just look really nice when they're raw. And if your beans are nice and tender and juicy, you can totally eat them raw, which is what we're gonna do today. Yeah, good girl, Posh. She needs her veggies too, guys. She was picking blackberries with me today too. Which is pretty hilarious because the blackberry bushes are really thorny. So they're really spiky. It's pretty funny to watch her like carefully go in and grab one off the bush. Yeah, I know. Sometimes I feel kind of weird when I eat beans raw, but if they're really good, then it's totally okay. But you will get some sometimes that are like really woody. Like I'm a little worried about these thicker ones. We might have let them go too long. We'll see when we slice it though. And I don't really worry about this little bean tip. Some people like to cut it off, but I don't see why. It doesn't really affect anything. Brizola wrapped around one raw French bean. That sounds unreal. Shaving of parm. I'm in. Do you hear about this new invention to drive away birds from blackberry fields? Foxes, starlings can ruin 30% of a crop all at once. That's nuts. Yeah, the crunch of the raw bean with the brizola, I can't even imagine. Because that's like your salty aspect, right? I'm just going to give these a quick little rinse before we go any further. They have automated lasers that shine all around the birds stay away that is so cool it doesn't really seem like we have a lot of birds that are eating the blackberries here because there's honestly so many still so i don't think we have that problem the lasers are like nine grand worth it though hopefully okay so you can cut on an angle if you want to be a little bit fancy you'll get a little bit more surface area or you can just slice them really thin straight across this way. And you get something that looks like that. And it'll give you a really nice little crunch in the salad. these beans can be a little bit starchy which is why it's a good idea to slice them really nice and thin and there's a really good recipe for preparing beans this way making them into a Thai salad so like kind of a ginger vinaigrette again. Fish sauce, obviously. Peanuts. Really, really refreshing. And obviously that little bit of spice too. Pashi, clean it up. Got the vacuum cleaner. Right here. Right there. Like, that's the smallest piece of bean ever. What is this? Ring a ding ding dong. You do that with your dog, it's honestly the best. Dog keeps the kitchen clean. Ham 
Sammy. You're here. Yeah, Matt. No more veggies. Matt can't handle it. And we gotta do more beans. I want like two cups worth. I want leftover salad for lunch tomorrow. Which is why I always serve my dressing on the side and then it doesn't go soggy. It's green beanios. What's up, Nike? Good to see you in here. Happy Monday. And this is a fun thing to work on your knife skills with, for sure. Keeping them all consistently sliced. Ratio has to be five to one meat to veg. <laughs> That's excessive. Deep fry them. That would be delicious. I do love a good, like, tempura bean. Hey, Tom. How are you? How was the weekend, man? Just deep fry the whole bean. Oh, now you like it, Matt. Deep fried veggies. Life change. Definitely doesn't help with the health aspect of it though when you throw it in the deep fryer. So I think that our casserole is definitely rich enough, which is why we need all these veggies to cut it. I am well, Tom. Thanks for asking. Ready to start another week with you guys. What readily available thing would be good to practice with cutting? I think carrots are some of the most challenging to cut. As well as onions, always a good thing to practice with. Honestly, onions, celery, and carrots. Yeah. And then make soups afterwards, because it doesn't matter what it looks like. It's true. Yeah, anything that you can turn into a soup afterwards, always a good idea. You got the job at Cheddar's, and the pay is ridiculously good. I am so happy for you, Nike. See, everything always works out in time, so that's great. Hopefully you'll really enjoy it there. Yeah, really good news. Yeah, Nike's just flexing on him. <laughs> Tom, starting with the beer already. Last little nub for Doggo. Whoa, Sammy with the resub. Six months in, guys. You've eaten that cheddars? That's really cool. Thanks, Sammy, for all of the love and support. Happy to have solid person on the onion squad. I guess, yeah, it is 620 there. Fair enough, man. Get it in ya. It's that time. Plus, it's always five o'clock somewhere. Like we need an excuse to crack a beer. You're drinking an arrogant bastard. Perfect beer for you. I love that. All chopped up perfectly. Eh, close enough, Dante. I don't think it's perfection if I was being picky. But it is really fun to chop beans like this. And I always try and do them almost as thin as possible. So you end up with a nice little medley like that. It's 12.17 for you, Hammy. So now we're gonna grate the beet, which 
think I'm just gonna line the cutting board with some parchment paper. Then we're gonna peel the beet and grate it. And that way my wood won't get stained with the red. gonna trade salt for nudes. The paperwork's all filled out. You are good to go then, dude. So I always like to cut off the beet tops ah, and have the beet roll away. Typical. Sometimes if your beet greens are really nice, these ones aren't too bad. They're a little bit floppy now. But you can totally use the, these as like a braised green. And sometimes I even put them in the smoothie. They do have a pretty earthy flavor though, so keep that in mind. Where is the veggie peeler? There it is. You're drinking a new Glarus Serendipity Ale. You guys and your fancy beers. I appreciate that. Leaves end up as a garnish. Exactly, Matt. Oh, I love Belgian ales. And I also love sour beers. Just try and find that one. And this beet was from the garden as well. You can do an episode of the layover. What? If you took a, like a 11 hour layover in Los Angeles or something. Oh, yeah. Let's do it. Hey, Harry. Newcastle Brown Ale. Sounds good, too. Nike, you were going to get some Jack. And then you got some sweet tea instead. Were you gonna celebrate about your new job? And have you yet? I think that always deserves some celebration moving on to something new. Do we have any beat haters in chat? Gotta be at least one or two of you that are, can't stand beats. I love alcohol. I used to drink a lot. Definitely cut it down lately. I do enjoy alcohol. I like to try new stuff. Everything in moderation, my peeps. That's all I gotta say about that. You don't drink and it's a joke. That's what I thought. Okay, I'm gonna put on a glove to grate this just so my hand doesn't turn really, really red. Beet greens will give you kidney stones if you consume a lot? Interesting. Vader's turnips pickled with beetroot juice. Yes, like the Middle Eastern ones. I've never made those yet. And I totally love putting them like in my pea wraps. So freaking good. They make a raspberry ale, a cherry ale, and an apple one as well. Okay, Sammy, I need this for a sec. Okay, 
what was it called again? New Glarus Serendipity Ale. Oh God. There we go. I put it in my browser so I can try and look for it later. Okay, Sammy, you can go. You've never washed before, Harry. I am from Canada. I'm on Vancouver Island, so far, far west coast. I was the lead party girl. I wouldn't say so, Matt. I definitely wasn't huge into partying like that. A lot of my high school was spent playing soccer and training and stuff. So I didn't end up like partying pretty hard until after high school. Late bloomer, guys. Nike, that's so good that you've been taking that time off. Have a little detox. Pickled eggs. See, I don't know if I can eat pickled eggs. Yeah, be another water fiber plant. Which is so good. Obviously, you can tell by the color, it has lots of antioxidants for you. The serendipity is more sour than the gooses you've had. That's good to know. Hey, American. We're shredding up some beets to put in our salad tonight. And then we're going to make up a sweet and spicy ginger vinaigrette. Sounds good, Matt. Have a good trek home. See you later. Our bodies can't break this color? No way. Well, it's true, because whenever you eat beets, you always have like a red tinge to your, your uh, fecal matters or your urine. It's interesting. You're from Newcastle. That's so cool. Well, welcome in. Thanks for posting that, Matt. I always like to learn new stuff. Yeah, it's funny. Whenever someone eats beets and forgets the next day when you go to the bathroom, it's like, am I dying? Oh, wait, I have beets. Okay. Not actually dead. Careful when you get to the end so you don't grate your finger off. And now we're going to keep the grater out because we're going to do the carrots next. But let's make sure that we give it a little rinse so that the beet color doesn't turn the carrots red. So we still want that nice contrast of color on the salad. Yeah, that wouldn't feel great. Glad that you're still getting in a couple puns off drinks. And you know what, guys? It's time for us to turn on the oven. So it's going to take around 10, 15 for it to preheat for the casserole. Uh, like I said, the casserole bakes for around 30 ish minutes. So we got to keep that in mind always. You don't want to put yourself behind. Let me just see what temp. It bakes that as I close my recipe. Okay, reopen it. Okay, 350 Fahrenheit. It says one hour, but typically 40 minutes has been perfect for us. And then it says, let it sit for a little bit before you serve. Okay, so 350, what we're preheating to. Go ahead, somebody. Okay, so I'm going to make nice little sections in this salad, I think. You have to retrain yourself for the puns. I love that. And you got to keep the kids entertained, I guess, hey? 
Otherwise, their attention spans are just gone. Okay, there's our beets. Let me just try and get most of this off. Thanks for the follow, Harry. Welcome in. Feel free to ask any questions. And I hope you enjoy the stream. Bye, Hammy. Have a good sleep. Okay, let's do our little bean pile over here. And then we'll do the carrots in the last little section. Nighty night. So I got one yellow carrot here from the garden and then I think I'm just gonna grab an orange carrot from the other fridge. Then we'll grate both of them up. Definitely want to peel them though. So I will be back in 30 seconds. Before we put it in the oven. <laughs> yeah, what's up, Doc? Cute little garden carrot. Is anyone familiar with the multicolored carrots? Like the purple, the yellow, you can even get some that are like almost white in color. Can you come over and get some of the salad? Of course, Nike. Oh, I think it's gonna be really yummy. Yeah, the purple carrots are super sweet and delicious. Some of my fave. You've tried the purple carrot juice. Yum. is back for a carrot snack. Typical. It's kind of got a beetroot quality to it. Yeah, that makes sense. Totally. The darker color is usually more earthy in flavor, hey? Okay, come here. Sit down. your nose. Okay, getting in here. Carrots are super juicy too. So usually when you grate them, a lot of juice comes out. So just be aware of that. Is the yellow carrot a different variety? Um, it is. Yeah, it's just like an heirloom multicolored carrot. This one's from the garden. The other two are bought. And it's a little bit wiggly, so I don't know how well it's going to grate up. Everyone had a good summer, yeah, totally been good so far. Can't believe how fast it's gone by already, Harry. Watching what's funny, yeah, it always makes you want to chop them. A hot summer, that is so true too. Box. 
Because everyone says it's been super hot everywhere. Which is kind of concerning. If I'm being honest. You don't really notice seasons except heat and cold. That's hilarious, Nike. Last summer was so cool where you are. Yeah, it's like, it's so hot. And then we have all these fires, so there's so much smoke everywhere. It's been an interesting one. The carrot is not grating very nicely. I guess that means it's a doggo snack. In the past, you've only needed to use it a few times. It's very interesting to see that climate change happen. Kind of scary though, for sure. beer. <laughs> hey, Posh has gotten lots of snacks today. She's got her fiber in her diet. You are so fine. Thanks, Karen. Hey. The one thing about shredding vegetables is that they usually end up like everywhere. Like there's just carrot shrapnel and beet shrapnel all over. But it's worth it. It's a great way to prep root vegetables for salad if you want to keep them raw. Because then they still have that crunch. Cold beer, yeah, always helps. Okay, that was our oven, so we're just coming up on 440. But I think I'm going to put that wife saver in now. That way we have the full hour if we need it, but my oven cooks pretty hot. So we probably won't need that full hour, which is okay. So it's totally okay to shut the oven off and just keep it warm in there as well. Definitely a really nice, colorful summer salad. Rise, how have you been? It's been a little while. try and just get a little clean up here of all our veggies before we carry on. Now we're going to move on to our dressing. And then, like I said, we're going to do a little bit of blackberry jam prep because there's time. Try and keep all of the colors separated so it looks really nice. Okay, so that can be set aside. Let us put this guy in. And I think 
think we garnish with the cornflakes now and the butter so that they kind of crisp up. Let me just double check so I'm going to need the cursor. Yeah. I've only made this, I think, once or twice before. Yeah, so we got to melt half a cup of butter, pour over the top, and then cover with crushed corn flakes, and then we'll bake it. Sounds good. Okay, go ahead. Maisie, how are you? Good to see you in here, girl. <laughs> Confuse them with carrots because they're expecting cheese. No. That's funny. Don't worry, there's definitely enough cheese in this guy that they won't miss it. Good, just not been on Twitch as much. Yeah, it's been a pretty busy summer for everyone. But glad to see you here when you do have time. Okay, just measuring out the half cup of butter. You ever tried a full English breakfast? That's funny you ask. Because someone else wanted me to prepare that as well. And I just haven't done it. But you know what? Let me write it down in my planner now. So I don't forget. Because that is definitely something I want to do. And yeah, I don't know if I could do the blood sausage aspect of it. I'm not huge on like liver or irony flavored foods. So I'd probably substitute that out for a homemade sausage of sorts. Looks kind of lasagna-like. Yeah, so what it is is bread layered with an egg custard and cheese and whatever kind of breakfast meat you want, whether it's like bacon or ham. We used some pork belly that we made crispy. What is the purple thing in the vegetables? That is beets. <laughs> Skirt. Easy, just skirting. Okay. Okay, so we just gotta melt this butter. Which is gonna make this even dirtier in the best way possible. Yeah, the twins are in the building. It's been a fun stream so far, I have to say. Quick little 30 second melt. Ooh, and how much cornflakes do we need? Maybe I should look at that. It doesn't say how much. So as much or as little as you want. And I've also tried Rice Krispies, but I don't think they taste as good as the cornflakes do. That's just my two cents. It's hard not to drop a skirt. <laughs> One cup. I'd probably go with two. Sorry, guys. I always forget that you can't stop this microwave from beeping once it starts. It will beep, and that is it. Yeah, probably two cups. Why don't we measure it out? and see what we end up putting on. We'll go on the higher end. And then go from there. Okay, there's our butter, nicely melted. You wish you were in between those breads. Yeah, you saw most of it, eh? You know what's in there. Two cheeses. Ah! That was so close. Yeah, typically I use cheddar. So we used old cheddar and an aged English cheddar for that little extra kick. Pro tip, don't pour your butter all over your cutting board. Try and pour it into the casserole. 
And obviously the butter is gonna help everything brown up and keep it moist. Just get a quick little wipey wipe of this. Pork belly pillows, yes. Bacon, sausage, baked beans, hash browns, toast with a bit of tomato sauce on the side. Yeet, yeet. That sounds so good. Yeah, I did make sure that I had a full English when I was in the UK. Such a filling and satisfying breakfast. Got like all of my favorite things in one place. You need a full English badly. Yeah, add black pudding and it's perfect. See, I don't know if I could do that. It might turn me off of the whole thing. Okay, let's go in. So I measured out two cups. Let's see what we end up with. I do make cakes. Yeah, I do typically like to bake at least once a week on stream. Show you guys something new. Measy, it's almost 1 a.m. Look at you staying up. Guys, and just so you know, Mia actually does stream as well. She does some IRL stuff. She does some gaming sometimes. And she's just a really great person to be around, so... If you're into that kind of thing, go give her a follow. And same thing goes with Pickled Eggs or Twin Vaders is their main channel. They are food streamers from the UK. So go check them out. Really fun to be around. Obviously they're on like different time zones than us North Americans, but well worth the watch. And I think we're gonna go the full two cups here of corn flakes. You're sleeping at 1 p.m. and waking up at 9 to 10 p.m. Holy, getting that sleep in. Well, you must need that recovery for something, hey? Take care of yourself. Elvin. Yeah, is it even legal in Canada to bake during stream? How was your weekend, Elvin? No problem, guys. I like to spread the love around on Twitch. There's just so many of us that obviously it can be hard to find the right people that you want to watch. Okay, so two cups of cornflakes and now we're going in the oven. Maybe if I hold this up, we'll be able to see the layers. There's definitely pork belly in there and cheese. So good. You're on a crazy time zone. Not even the UK. <laughs> She's wild. Okay, let's do a 40 minute timer. So lower end of the spectrum and then we'll go from there. Basically the main thing you wanna look for here in the egg casserole is that your eggs are cooked and not runny. And then just let them set up for a couple minutes before you serve. And that way you end up with some cheesy, porky happiness at the end. You ended up in the office all Saturday. Dang, dude. Well, I'm sure it was worth it. Or at least I hope so. Okay, back to the salad. So we're moving on to our sweet and spicy ginger vinaigrette. <laughs> In the summer, your natural activity tends toward going to bed at two to three and waking up at 10. I have a really hard time staying up late now. I don't know, I've been converted. I'm just used to waking up around 6 a.m. every morning, so I'm used to going to bed early. It's the struggle, guys. Is it just Americans that typically have eggs for breakfast? Mia is telling us straight up, UK have eggs all the time for breakfast. 
think eggs are a pretty universal ingredient for breakfast. Okay, I'm gonna make the dressing in this little two cup container or 500 milliliters. We need some white wine vinegar, olive oil and vegetable oil. So I'm gonna use grapeseed. And I find when you make a dressing, if you don't want that really strong olive oil taste, it's totally okay to cut it with some vegetable oil. And that way I think some of your other ingredients will shine like our ginger and our chili flakes. Because olive oil can be pretty strong and it can get bitter as well. And I always recommend using extra virgin olive oil for dressings. That way it's not that bitter. Hey, okay, white wine vin. You try to avoid sugar and other carbs in the morning. Yeah, breakfast is a really important part of the day. So I always try to eat something really healthy. That way you start your day right, kickstart your metabolism as well. And that's why I drink smoothies five times a week. That way I know that I've eaten all the good stuff for the day. So I don't have to feel that bad if a meal ends up being not that healthy because I already got a lot of my vegetable servings. Okay, just gonna grab the maple syrup out of the fridge. Like I said, you can also sweeten with honey or just sugar is okay too. And then we just need to peel up some ginger and mince it. I might actually throw this all into the blender and that way it'll get blended really nice and smooth. Then I'll grab our chili flakes as well. You like the taste of cereal, but the majority of them has a ton of sugar. Yep. Totally. Oats are always a good option too for breakfast. They're pretty filling. They got lots of fiber in them. I also grabbed out some chives that we can chop up for garnish later. Do I blend vitamins into my smoothies? I use this uh, all greens powder that we get from Costco. So we do a scoop of that. So I mean, I share a scoop. It's really, really good. Just like pretty much all veggies and fruits. I don't even know how many <laughs> ingredients there are, too many. Like that's the ingredient list of what's in here. And I also put in like a handful of greens like spinach or Swiss chard as well. And I find it, I find that if you have enough veggies and stuff in your diet, you don't really have to take vitamins. Okay, let's get in to our blender. So we can measure out the wet ingredients already. You had some cornflakes when you eat or make milk bar stuff. Yes. So freaking good. Ah. Okay, you know what? Let's do our ginger first. Sugar smacks. What is that even? And rise. You feel most energized with carbs, pasta, rice, and potatoes. That's because they do have quite a bit of sugar in them. So you get that sugar spike right away, with, which helps with your energy. It's totally not a bad thing. As long as you're not putting too much fatty stuff with them, I think that's okay. And obviously having those carbs is still better than anything sugary. I'm gonna just peel off our ginger, any perfections that you might see. The ginger is smiling. I didn't even notice it, dang it. And I'll just cut this into a couple smaller pieces. 
Delina, welcome in, kitten. How have you been? Yeah, it has been a little while since you've been in, which is totally okay. I know we're all busy. And at least you still keep in touch on Discord. I like that. So a nice one inch nub of ginger to go into our dressing. So it's gonna be really nice and gingery. It's a ginger man. Someone should go back and clip it so we can look at it afterwards. Okay, half a cup of white wine fin. So that's our acidic component. Cookies for breakfast is cool, but we need more. Let's make Reese's cups. Yes. Reese's pieces cereal. So good. Or Reese puffs. Unreal. I'm a big chocolate peanut butter fan. He needed a haircut anyway. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to do a third cup each of the olive oil and vegetable oil. Oh yeah, they totally got us hooked on sugar. 100%. Sometimes blenders don't do the best job with ginger. It's true. I have faith in mine though. Thanks for the follow, Lethal Panda. You're lagging by over a minute. Nuts. Ah, oh, you were gone a while without internet. Well, that makes sense. I'm glad you've been good then. Lee Jags. Welcome in. Thanks for the follow. Crazy usernames. Hey, jelly filled poop. You're back. How are you? You're responsible. Your dad went on a trip for a week and left you home with some money for stuff to order out. You just ate ice cream for breakfast. Nice. Adulting. Best part about life. You can do what you want. So now we're gonna use a teaspoon of these chili flakes. So red pepper powder are also called gochugaru. Is if you look at them, they're very fine. And the flavor is, like I said, more floral and less spicy than traditional red chili flakes that you can get. They still have that little bit of spice though, so you can add a little bit less if you so desire. Harry, right now, we're just about to finish up Orange is the New Black on Netflix. That's what we've been watching for the last little bit. Such a good show. Betty doesn't like pine nuts. I know. Shocking, right? Yeah. Hopefully it's bacon and egg ice cream to go with the breakfast theme. I like that. Bacon ice cream is legit. I believe I've had it before. When you were a kid, you wanted to stay up all night eating pizza. You're in bed by 10 p.m. and haven't had pizza in months. Well, come on, Alvin. Got to get your priorities straight. Okay, lastly, two tablespoons of maple syrup or some sort of sweetener. You got to contrast that spice and acid. I find that most salad dressings need a sweetener. that it can blend all of this up until it's smooth. Maple walnut milkshake, that sounds unreal jelly filled. Like really, really good. Maple and pecan is always good too. Maple walnut bacon. It's all about that sweet and salty contrast, hey guys? Okay, 
hey, lid's going on. Let's go over to the blender station. See what we end up with. that the ginger gets broken up really nice. You are not and will never be a morning person. That's hilarious. You made chicken cordon bleu jelly food? Is that what you meant? So, so good. is turning a really nice bright orange from breaking up the chili flakes so now we need to have a little taste and see how much salt we need to add and we'll add a little bit of fresh cracked pepper chicken blue yeah it sounds like a toilet bowl cleaner <laughs> so bad chicken cordon bleu you need to pick up some maple syrup. You're debating between Coombs family syrup. Have you been to Coombs? I've been there. It's unreal. Or is Coombs not the BC one that you are thinking of? So there is a place on the island here called Coombs. Okay, this is what we're looking at. Mm, really nice. So definitely the salt will help bring out that really nice ginger flavor. I think around half a teaspoon should be great. You used to have chicken cordon bleu for your school lunch. Why would they get rid of that? And I think that much black pepper should be great. Let's give this one more quick little blend and then we'll see how we did. Your school's chicken cordon bleu is just a chicken patty sandwich with a slice of deli ham and cheese. That's absolutely no effort involved. That's sad. Cordon bleu was a home more for France's highest order. Oh yeah term eventually went for food prepare at the highest level. I remember saying that when I made the cordon bleu for Vune on stream. Yeah, it's very cool history. American school food is trash. I'm sure some schools have really good food. I just wish all schools had really good food. Like that's such an important part of the day when you're a kid and growing. Like you need good energy to be able to learn. Okay, one more little tasty taste. Mm, I think that's perfect. Just a hint of ginger, guys. It's not really overpowering at all. And the spice is not really there either. You could totally add garlic to this too. But since we added garlic in the wipe saver, I thought we would leave it out. Just so it didn't get too garlicky. So 
now we can just set this aside with the salad and pretty much everything for dinner is good to go. School food. The horror. Yeah, we did not have good school lunches either. Really, really bad, honestly, for the price that they would charge. I always brought my own food to school, or at least tried to. What are turkey twirlers? That sounds interesting. Okay, just putting a couple ingredients away. And then we'll be jamming, jamming mug. The original pizza was Greek and square. I believe it. I think I read that somewhere already. Most schools buy discounted meat with lots of gristle. That's so bad. Like you think that the students are paying enough tuition already. Just give them good food. Okay, our last thing for dinner prep before we move on is just chopping up our chivers real quick. After a while, you just ate Hostess and Little Debbie snacks for school lunch. Yeah, at least you know what's in it, that's true. Yeah, I'm not a big chicken nugget person just because of the texture is so, so weird. Call it pink slime. Hopefully you guys have seen that YouTube video. If you haven't, just look up pink slime. Terrifying. And you're welcome. Okay, so try and chop the chives as thin as possible and you can either Use this as a garnish on the wife saver or even on the salad as well. Sometimes they have whole wheat pasta with a bland tomato sauce. And that's about the worst of it. That's not bad then, after it. What? Box fish! Thank you for the sub! So happy you decided to stay. Welcome to the Onion Squad. And I hope you enjoy that emote and your stay. I'm gonna quickly post our Discord in chat, because that's where I keep all of our recipes. Why you know work? So feel free to join in on the Discord. I have all the recipes posted for this week already, and six of them are my own that I made up specially for stream. So feel free to poke around in there if you want, and also feel free to post whatever you want. There's quite a few different little channels in there, so have fun, and thanks for joining the squad. Yeah, taking the plunge. Love it. So happy to add another awesome person in. Especially someone who likes good beer, that is so true. Yeah, 
Thirsty Thursday is always a fun one. Hey, Stinky, how are you? <laughs> Elvin. <laughs> Cough. I love it. Go, go, go. Chop the chai. Well now, yeah. We have a pretty good crew in here. And actually a lot of highly educated people, which is probably my favorite part, because not only do I teach you guys stuff, but you also teach me. And I love to learn. All right, Harry. That is awesome. Hope you have a good sleep. And I will be back tomorrow if you feel like popping in. Same time, same place. Tomorrow we're making burritos for a viewer request. Okay, there is our garnish. Ready to go. We're all cleaned up. We got 17 minutes left on the wife saver, guys. Taking a quick peek. It looks unreal already. Not too much color yet, which is a good thing. So you don't want to burn those cornflakes on top. And now, on to the jam. Just gotta grab a lemon note. Some lemon juice for that. Sorry, I just need to catch up for a sec. You actually have a cardboard box graveyard in your back room by the kitchen. You just haven't recycled them fast enough. Hilarious. <laughs> Cheers, knife skills of a professional. I have cooked in the industry and I still am. I've been cooking for eight years straight and I really, really enjoy it. There's a lot of stuff to learn when you cook and there's a lot of stuff to teach. And I feel like not enough stuff does get taught to people. And that's why they're scared of cooking is they're scared of making mistakes or trying new flavors. But I am here to push those boundaries with you guys and hopefully inspire you to cook more at home. What base are you on? Oh, we have a base sense of humor yet. <laughs> yeah, this is my first day. Okay, let me grab the book which we make our jam out of. So this is the book that Sammy bought me, I think in the springtime, hey? Yeah. When I just started working on the farm and was thinking about the garden in the backyard. So saving the season. This is on Amazon. So far, it's a really good book and the directions are really easy to follow. So if you want to get into preserving or making jams or pickles, this is the book for you. There are very basic recipes and there's also some very elevated recipes, should I say, where they do some different stuff, add some different flavorings in and really play around with how you preserve stuff. So really good read and really handy to have around in the kitchen. So we are making wild blackberry jam. It took me, I would say about 20 minutes this morning to pick two and a half pounds just in our little subdivision here. So that's what we need for the base of the recipe. Two and a half pounds of berries to two and a half cups of sugar and then two tablespoons of lemon juice when you always need some acid when you're gonna make a jam like this. Sam wants jam. 
That is true, Opteryx. Yeah, it doesn't scroll that fast. And even though there's usually a bunch of people watching, not everyone is involved in the chat. There's a lot of lurkers, which is totally okay. But maybe sometimes it scrolls too fast for me just because I get focused on other stuff. But it has a good pace and it makes the time go by really fast for me. Yeah, Sammy buying me books, as always. Thanks for the host, Bark Dog. Okay, let's get into it. So these are some older berries that I picked last week. And then I have these that I just picked today. And funny enough is the two and a half liters that I pick actually equal out to the two and a half pounds that we need. So that's an easy way to measure too. So what I do when I pick is I just bring my two and a half liters with me and make sure I fill them. And then I know I have enough weight of blackberries to make this one recipe. And very important before you even start is you wanna pick through your berries. Make sure there's no wormies or weird sticks or anything in there. Definitely don't want any moldy ones because that can throw off your whole batch of jam really, really quick. So always a good idea to pick through first and then carry on because the making the jam part is really easy. Pretty much boil it for eight minutes until it gets thick and then put it into your jars. That is honestly it. Just picture the lurkers preparing their own dinners at home. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, some people like Elvin actually do use my recipes and go buy the ingredients ahead of time and cook with me on stream, which is really fun too. I like to kind of just like drizzle the blackberries in and just watch as they fall in. Obviously all the ones I picked today, I know are okay. Maybe some like this that are not completely ripe. This is gonna be really sour. So I'll leave those ones out. And we are gonna give them a wash as well. Make sure they're nice and clean. Yeah, we do love all cultures here, but preferably English as a language is the one that most of us understand. Is there a browser extension to translate on Twitch? That would be so, so cool. Oh, you have made a couple of the recipes afterwards. Yes. You made the Eton mess. So, so easy, hey? Okay, our last little container. And just a heads up, guys, if you live on the west coast of North America, you should be able to find blackberries growing wild, at least farther up by Canada. I know a lot of people in Oregon have these as well. There we go, guys. So just gonna pop over, give them a nice little rinse. And then we'll measure out our sugar, which I think I have to go grab more from the other side. Juice our lemon and then everything's going into a pot and then we have to cook it down. It was a snap, so good. You're really craving it. It's such a good summertime meal. They grow on the East Coast. See, Opterix, I didn't know that. That is so awesome. Yeah, even blackberries just straight. Whole milk, yogurt, and honey. So freaking good. Considering most 
people pay $5 for, let's say, a cup worth of these in the store, definitely pays off to pick them in the wild. Take advantage of that season. You could also just freeze them if you don't want to make jams right away or don't know what to do with them. That way you can just take them out and thaw them when you do decide what you want. Berries do stay really well in the freezer. So that's always a good option. There is a blackberry dish with whipped cream that you remember vividly as a kid. Yum. Might have to have one. Mmm. So good. Okay, so what did I say? Two tablespoons of fresh squeezed lemon juice. Very important. But I think we'll need both of these lemons. Got a gallon of fresh blueberries for 10 bucks at a farm near you last week. That's a good price. Yeah, blueberries are, I think, my favorite berry. I might have to pick some up as well and make some jam. And speaking of jam, while we're in here, what is your guys' favorite type of jam? And what do you usually put it on? That's the question of the day. What's your favorite type of jam? And how do you like to eat it? I think I might have to cut that guy a little bit smaller. Have I ever had huckleberries? That one? I don't know, Indog. I'm actually unsure about that one. What are they like? Wild blueberries are so amazing. Yep. Yeah, there's like a little you pick farm here. Really want to go and pick a bunch. I don't know. Berry picking for me is like also therapeutic. Your favorite is ginger preserves. That is such an awesome one. I do have some really nice pickled ginger that I made in the fridge. Your favorite toasted whole wheat bread with butter and jam. Yeah, like butter and jam. Such a good combo together. Consumed visually over your Sega Genesis. <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah, you gotta battle the bears. I'm always very concerned when I go picking because there's so many bears here. That might actually be enough lemon juice. Just get my pot out. I think I used this one last time. Give it a little measure and see where we're at. I've honestly, I think my favorite jam might be either apricot or strawberry. I love apricot jam. You're on a marmalade kick right now. Oh, fig butter. You fancy, huh? Okay, we are definitely good on the lemon juice front. Didn't even have to cut open that lemon, guys. Okay, we'll just pack it away. And what do we got? We got four minutes left on the wife saver until that's our 40 minutes. But we might need that full hour. Sammy Lingenberry jam. Did you have that in Germany? No? I think so. Sounds familiar. Yeah, I think so too. Souk is honestly crazy with bears. There's just like bear signs everywhere. We have to be really careful with our fruit cheese right now. So like our apples and stuff. 
Make sure that if any fall, we pick them up. So no bare attractants anywhere. Like all of the garbage has to be kept inside, otherwise they'll just go straight for it. Okay, we can put our berries in now. And then what we need to do, crush the berries with the lemon juice and sugar. And then reduce over high heat, stirring constantly to the gel point, about eight minutes. And then take it off the heat and ladle the hot jam into your prepared jars. Fig preserves, yeah, they're so, so good. I think it's worth the money. Like fig preserves with cheese on a really nice charcuterie board, so good. Whenever you get good jam, you have to get a decoy jam for your roommate's boyfriend. He crushes PBJs all the time, I love that. Yeah, distract him with the fancy label, hey? <laughs> Charcuterie for life, I know pickled eggs. Could honestly like live on it. Cured meats and cheeses and bread. Give me all of those things. Another thing that I like to put jam on is making pancakes and putting cheese in them or on them when you're cooking them on the flat top and then they get really nice and crispy and then putting jam on top of that. And you get that sweet and savory contrast, so good. One day you'll find out the restaurant is using like Ikea brand bling <laughs> and berry preserves. <laughs> yeah. This might be another thing that most people don't do when they make jam, is put in the right amount of sugar. It's kind of shocking the amount of sugar you need to make a good jam, but that's what helps make it thick. And that is like part of the preserving process, right? Okay. Is the timer. Let's just quickly measure out our sugar and then put this over to the stove or just move it over and then we'll see how our wife saver is doing. So two and a half cups of sugar guys. I know it sounds like a lot but you really do need all of this. We like our jams thick. Yeah we do. People forget that you can make pancakes savory. Another good one is green onion pancakes. So, so good. Look at this 
Look at that bubble there from the fat. <laughs> yes. Yes. This is the wife saver, Elvin. Pour pancake batter on top of fried strips of bacon. I don't think I've ever done that. Maybe I did it at work once. I just don't remember. But I don't think it would be that good. I feel like the bacon would get soggy. Yeah, too many calories. Like, look at this. Hello. So now all I'm gonna do is just pierce the center part, obviously. So we need to make sure that the custard is cooked. You don't want any runny eggs here. And we will adjust the time accordingly if it needs a little bit longer. I mean, you can make this a little bit more healthy, but I think you should stick to the recipe for the first time. Okay, so we look like we're a little bit wet still here. So I think I'm going to do an additional 10 or even just turn off the oven at this point and let it carry over in there. And that way it'll kind of rest up as well. Sometimes it is deceiving though with all the cheese in here, whether it's runny egg or just really melted cheese. Yeah, honestly, this stuff is so, so good. This is not a Kate original. This is like from way back in the day. And my dad used to make this on Christmas Eve, let it sit overnight, and that way it saved Betty from having to make breakfast Christmas morning. And it only takes about an hour to bake. So we would pop that in the oven and then open our gifts and chill out until it was ready. This is a family tradition for sure for as long as I can remember. And yes, it is cornflakes on top. Unreal. Okay, turning the oven off. We'll let this carry over cooking for 10 more minutes. And then we'll take it out to set up. We got shredded carrot in the salad though, guys. Okay, back down to our jam. So what we need to do before we boil it is break down the berries a little bit with the sugar and lemon juice. And this will actually go liquidy really quick. I think this helps to make a really good jam. So I'm just using a potato masher to do this. I don't think you have to go like really crazy breaking them down, but as long as you make this into like a nice liquid mixture, that really helps the sugar to dissolve quickly and not burn. <laughs> making bacon pancakes, making bacon pancakes. Love it guys. A cereal killer, yes. Yeah, two cups of cornflakes on top. Add as much or as little as you want. Okay, there is that. The base of our blackberry jam for now. And I'm just gonna turn on some lights. It's that time of day, guys. The sun is a setting. So there we go ready to go. Ho ho! Thanks for the host, Rebel. And now, like I said, you want to cook this on a nice high heat. We do have to heat it up, yes. So we need to cook down the fruit, the acid, and the sugar and that helps to thicken it up. So around eight to 10 minutes, and it's called gel set. So you can temp it with a thermometer. I think it was 
20 Fahrenheit. Or the other way, the old school way to test it is to put a little plate or a bowl in the freezer, chill it really well, and then put a little spoonful of the jam on when you think it's around being done. And if it kind of sets up and forms a little skin on top within a minute, then you're good to go. Cheerios on top. That's an interesting one. That would probably be good, actually. Like I said, I've only ever done Rice Krispies. But Rice Krispies don't crisp up the same way as the Corn Flakes do. Yeah, the kitchen's going to be so dark in the winter. We'll probably end up having to get another light of sorts for the stream. Don't think the sun is setting. Well, it is here, the way that our property is located. But yeah, the smoke from the fires is really bad too right now. No pectin in here, Nike, at all. Yeah, here in BC, not really on the island is there too many fires, but over in the Okanagan. There are lots. And that happens almost yearly, which is really sad. Torches on the sconces. That would be epic. Okay, so gel set. Yeah, 220 degrees Fahrenheit if you want to temp it. The world is burning, honestly. That's how I feel too. whole process of making jam from start to finish probably will take you around half an hour since the world's been turning we're burning putting that extra lemon juice away jars. I thought he was going to say the beds are burning. So I have this little guy. I'm just going to bring this down for us. I just cleaned these the other day, so I know that they're already sanitized. Got this one. That's a little bit deeper. And then I think we'll need maybe three or four of these smaller ones. So this is what I was talking about is making a couple of these smaller jars to keep obviously for yourself, but they're all really great to give to people as gifts. Yeah, you can post a link for sure chance, just make sure that it's safe, please. That's all I ask. When you were in grad school, your friends were working on global circulation models. Very cool. Yeah, little did you know how important they actually would end up being. Yeah, there we go. Chance, the BC fires. So, so much, hey? No, that link is not working there, bud. And I always like to put all of our jars onto like a sheet pan, just in case you spill some when you're labeling it in later on. That way you don't make too much of a mess everywhere. So a little setup like that, always a good idea. And if you have one, 
a nice like funnel to fit into the jar, always a good idea too, but I don't have that. So we're just gonna go freehand. And you know what? This is my little trick. Instead of using a ladle, what I like to do is pour it into a measuring cup, hopefully with a nice spout like this, and I find it way easier to just pour into the jars this way. There's definitely less spillage. the coldest, darkest place you've ever seen it. Yeah, hopefully we can do some good for our earth though in the next little bit. <laughs> the epitome of evil lawyers. Well done, Filet. Sad times for sure. Pride comes before the fall always. Yeah, it's not hard to be kind or nice. We're all fighting a battle no one knows. Keep that in mind, guys. Just be lovely to everyone. Okay, I think while we wait for all of this stuff to finish up, why don't we plate up our salad? That way we are pretty much ready to go for dinner. Quinnell is looking bad? No way, Chance. That's where my aunt lives. I didn't know that there was a fire up there. Dang. Hey, we got our nice plate for plating. And we have like 30 seconds left on the wife saver. So I think I'm going to take it out and let it rest up. Look at this stuff coming up to a boil now. And be careful because when that jam starts to boil, it will splash sometimes. And hopefully all of you know that hot sugar is not something to mess around with. You can get burnt really bad. So just be careful. Oh yeah, she's uh, definitely done now. <laughs> it's like honestly my favorite part. I'm just like watching the grease bubbles in here. <laughs> oh, stick to your belly kind of good. Let me try and dig down to our salad greens. Make a nice little bed and then we'll kind of lay out the veg accordingly. Oh, I guess we're plating right there. Thanks to the beets. Definitely want a good serve and a veg with this too. Put our beets over there. Maybe we shouldn't have started on the beet side because now everything we touch is going to be colored red. Maybe I'll just rinse the tongs off real quick so we can still keep that color contrast. I'm going to do the beans in the middle, kind of break up the shredded veg. it all contained. Yeah, people are amazed, Nike, when you're actually nice to them. It's like, whoa, like, what are you doing? It's 
pretty sad, I would say, that they don't even expect kind gestures anymore. I think that looks good, guys. Tuck that little piece in. Yeah, valuable, very valuable wipe saver space with all of these veggies. What are we doing? Okay, our jam is a boiling. I'm gonna turn it down a touch. Smells unreal already. And maybe we'll just wait to dress it until the very, very end. Yeah, sometimes people even get suspicious. That's so true. It's even worse. I think we're okay. I love the color of this sweet and spicy ginger dressing. It's like nuclear orange. You've never made jam before? You gotta get jam in Opterix. I know this wife saver looks so good. I think we need to bring it over closer to the camera. <laughs> too delicious looks like squash soup yeah kind of food is the answer to world peace i agree with that statement vaders food is like the simplest thing to bring people together The smells coming out of this thing. I wish you guys knew what I was talking about. And like I said, the edges get so nice and crispy. Really, really good contrast. Yum. Too much sugar, yo. Never. You need sugar to make jam. It's the love and trust that's behind food. That is true. That makes sense. I'm just scraping the sides back down from when it was bubbling up. So I think that was just cooking out all the impurities. Bless you, Sammy. Cooking out all the impurities from the berries, that's why it kind of boiled up. So now it's starting to thicken. Your jam hurts. That's a sad, sad thing then. Crocs on the feet. Yeah, chef for sure. It's true. You caught me. Okay, guys, and while we're waiting, quick little update on the apron that we gave away. I'm sure some of you in here remember that. I sent it to Flexard. It arrived there in Scotland like probably three weeks ago now, and it's been on hold. And what he said to me was that there is a customs charge, but he said he was going to pick it up two weeks ago. Haven't heard anything since. I looked at the tracking again and it's still on hold there. So I have a feeling that the apron might be getting sent back. So we might be doing another giveaway for the apron depending on what happens. 
which honestly sucks for me because I paid to ship it all the way there. So I really wish that he would have just picked it up and accepted his gift. Where are the orange crops? I am not Mario Batali, but I guess it would work with my shirt today. Yeah, it's a very dangerous apron. Nah, it's just on hold because he's not going to get it. Scott's charging an apron tax. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I put it down as a gift, so he shouldn't have been charged anything for customs. Shkirk! Welcome in. Let me just give this a quick stir. Do I have any tips for someone who's thinking about starting a cooking stream? Well, now that there are so many of us doing cooking streams now, I think it's really important to be organized and know what you want to get out of your stream. And I think the camera quality as well as your overlay really, really helps. So you always want your quality to be up there. So I would always say quality over quantity, in my opinion, and staying really consistent, having a good schedule so people know when to watch you is a really big help. And thank you for the follow. Yeah, networking. I mean, with the community, at least the cooking community on Twitch, I think there's a lot of people that go back and forth between a lot of streams that they enjoy. So networking shouldn't be too hard for you. Okay, this is thickening up. I'm gonna cut into the wife saver now, guys. Dish this up. Camera angles for sure. Yeah, totally stoner. Can you make Ovaltine? I don't think I've ever even drank Ovaltine. Isn't it just malt powder though? I'm sure someone can make Ovaltine themselves. Okay, let's go in here. Like I said, I usually cut pretty big pieces. Obviously you could cut it smaller. Cut it into three lengthwise if you want. Let's go for this croissant edge that's really nice and crispy. There's a lot of really nice roasted garlic aroma coming out of this right now. Loosen up our corner piece. Guys, who doesn't love a good crispy cheesy corner piece? Ovaltine is a delicacy, really. Okay, this is getting close. I'm going to turn it down now because this is when it started to splash last time. I think this has rested for enough time. Oh, it looks like there is a little piece that is stuck. Try not to distract it. Okay, we're going up. We can look at all these amazing layers. You guys. What is this even? Am I right? We got our eggs, we got our pork, we got our cheese, and we got our bread all in one place. Like, so crispy and delicious. Like, look at this part. Hello. Should not be allowed. The slots in the spatula, yeah, a must. It's true. So slide that onto your plate. So we know because there's nothing running out, it's perfectly cooked and set up. If there was eggs running out, that would have to be cooked a little bit longer for sure. Just gonna take this guy out so we can 
finish up with our dressing and garnishes. Yeah, there is croissant in there and I also used up like two hot dog buns. <laughs> That's the best part is you can use up whatever leftover bread you want. Have I ever painted food? <laughs> no. So let's get finely chopped chives onto here. Totally okay if some of them fall onto the salad too. So you get that little bit of onion flavor, but it's not too, too strong. Yeah, savory bread pudding, exactly. Yeah, if you wanna get drunk off breakfast, just add some bourbon. Salt bay that Ovaltine, oh my goodness. I don't know if Ovaltine would have a part in this, but I like where your head's at, very creative. Beets, yeah, what do beets taste like? They taste pink. <laughs> I know, they're pretty hard to describe, hey? I think that's enough dressing. It's not even that spicy. I'm hoping that as it sits in the fridge overnight that it gets a little bit more spicy and the oils kind of bring out that chili flavor. So here is our finished product. I'm gonna go take a photo real quick. How good does this look for breakfast? I think that's a pretty balanced meal. Go to take a photo for Instagram if you guys haven't yet should definitely check it out that is like my little chef profile i would say or portfolio there is the link canadian oval team yeah i have seen it in the stores should probably give that a little stir too Taste test. <laughs> That's my slice, punk. Yeah, don't even mess with a man's wife saver. Not something to mess with. Yeah, this camera is your heartbeat of love. I just love how you can just put your fork right through it and it just stays together. Such a dirty slice. Like the eggs pretty much bake in to the cheese. Cheers guys. Thanks for uh, being here to share this awesome meal with me. <laughs> yeah, you guys are dying, hey? And careful because it's really hot. Don't burn your mouth. Yeah, now we think that there's not enough pork belly. The struggle. I mean, I do have that extra piece that I did not decide to fry up. But think about the eggs is adding extra protein too. So I think you're hitting all your bases. Eight ounce mason jars. For sure that's a good place to start. Mm-hmm. The uh, aged cheddar 
I think is such a good addition. No problem, Box. Welcome to the squad. And I'm glad we didn't add more than a teaspoon of salt into the custard. Because the cheese is salty. Our pork belly was pre-seasoned, so that has salt in it. And obviously when it cooks all together, all of that kind of gets drawn out, right? So seasoning is perfect, which is awesome. We don't have to add anything on top. The cornflakes are super, super crunchy. And like I said, that little piece of bread on the edge always has that amazing crunch. And yeah, the inside, I wouldn't really call it soggy because it's pretty set up. Like it's more like just a scrambled egg texture. If you didn't know that there was bread, you probably wouldn't know. It was so good, I had to have another bite. Yeah, you can totally sub out the meat for whatever veggies you want. Thanks guys, thanks for all the love. I'm just uh, creeping on belly to see who we should raid. What are you guys feeling? We have a chef de party. We got Robin. We got vegan chick making some bootables. And we also have Clinket making up omu rice. Crab instead of pork belly. That would be epic. So, so good. You're feeling the jam, yeah, screw everyone else. No raid today. Let's go give vegan chick some love, guys. I think we ended off with Robin last week. So let's spread the love around. I do love bootables. They are a great variation if you don't want to eat meat at some time because they are really filling. So thanks for all the love today, guys. Thanks, Shadow. I will see you tomorrow making burritos for Trist. Welcome in all the new subs. Thank you for the biddies and all of the follows. We are almost at a thousand. Holy shit. Okay. Have a good one. Love you all. Thanks for everything. See you tomorrow. Going in. There we go.